freaking gentlemen, it is Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012, and this is Day 9 Daily number 474, where we learn to be a better gamer. In today's daily, we're going to get the opportunity to look at somewhat of a modern PvP. Um, where we're going to get the chance to see not bullshit. Yay! Because PvP is one of the matchups riddled with total bullshit. Cannon rushes, proxies, and of course, and of course, the four gate, right? The four gate's a real big problem in the matchup. It causes death at a really high frequency. Whether you're doing it, you're killing a lot of people. Whether you're having it done at you, you're losing a lot. And most importantly, when it starts to peter out, it feels painful. So, in this daily, we're going to examine interesting openings that can defend against all these kinds of things. And, of course, we're going to get the opportunity to see modern PvP before us. One of the players will be going for Blink! The other player will be going for... Phoenix. Oh! Who loves the Phoenix? Yep. Yep, I do. I do. Who's got the pit stains? Me. I have them. And it's good to be back because I like primary colors. I have this blue shirt, this yellow cup, and a tomato red nerd face. Very excited to bring you the show. I feel like there's something important to announce. Yes, Twitch TV apparently has integration with your Facebook profile. Um, as in, you know, not not the normal thing like, hey, I'm going live or something like that. Uh, that's what that's what Twitter's for. But it's like a, um, uh, it like lets all your friends on there know what they're what they're watching, so you can like hop in or something like that. I don't know how to turn it on because I just got home and found out about it. But it seems pretty cool, and if you want to test it out, go for it. The reason I bring it up is that um, a lot of my friends are really into speedruns, and I fucking love speedrunning. Like speed demos archive, greatest site ever. It is the one site that I have visited as long as I have been visiting Team Liquid. Um, Team Liquid. And uh, all my friends were watching Sigil Mike do his world record run on Mario 64. And I was linked midway through and got the chance to see it live! And that was amazing. I was screaming and jumping for joy. Uh, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Uh, but yeah, if you guys would use that and let me know if it works or not, I would love to know. Let's go ahead and hop into the daily topic. God, I feel like there's something else. Screw it, let's do this. In this daily, we're going to watch none other than... Da -da -da -dum, the, hit the wrong button. Ba -da -da -dum, we're going to watch none other than Mao Sports Mana, one of the most ever so talented Protosses who recently won the Summer Dream Hack 2012, and a lot of you are like, spoiler alert, well, you know what? Ares dies in Final Fantasy VII, and in Titanic, the ship eventually sinks, all right? These are things that you should know about by now, all right? In the sixth sense, he's dead, all right? Listen, you have these are things you have to know. <laughs> that one guy always see the sixth sense, and he's like, what? You're, oh, I can't believe the ship sank? I thought it was about sailing. Also, Santa isn't real, and you are extremely beautiful. This should be obvious by now. Should be obvious by now. <laughs> oh god, the chat is freaking out. Oh man, this is great. Okay, this is from Winter Dreamhack. Or excuse me, Summer Dreamhack. Excellent. So, what I want to do is I want to first begin the story from the point of view of Mouse Sports Mana. There's a whole bunch of checks that you have to make in Protoss vs. Protoss at the start to make sure you don't die to what we call total fucking bullshit. The kind of thing that when you lose to it, you don't learn, you just feel mad. And I don't want that for you. So we're going to go through those checks from both players' point of view. Most notably the proxy, um, photon cannon, slash um, proxy gate, and the upcoming four gate. But there's something important that happens in between, which is those one zealot, two stalker pushes. It can be a little bit problematic, especially if he chrono boosts them out. So we have a number of things that we want to worry about. And I'll say right off the bat, it is okay if you foregate in PvP. I'm literally not even going to discuss doing a foregate, because it's pretty easy just to wing, honestly. You'll, you'll optimize it in a very short amount of time. The goal for us, if we're in Mouse Sports Mana's shoes, is to get past 
any of that early threatening point stuff. Here is the first key scout timing, is after you build the gateway, just checking around for a proxy gate. And this will differ on some maps on Cloud Kingdom, building the pylon here and the two gates there, very common. Um, on um, Ohana, some weird gate in base stuff like that also happens. But, mana, not gonna over scout, not gonna over freak out. Is gonna go ahead and just build down this early assimilator. 13 gate, 14 assimilator. Now, I'll stay straight away. There, this is not a necessary scout. The important thing is to think about how the scout will help against those three things. Proxy gates uh, slash cannons, the four gate that could happen, or the push with one zealot and some stalkers right at the outset. You'll notice that mana's actually being a little bit preemptive with the checking. There are other build orders where you get two gateways really quickly and you try to check out, um, or you try to build three stalkers early on for defense, all that good jazz. But in um, Mana's Shoes, we don't necessarily know that yet. That's a perfectly acceptable build to open up with. So we see Mana feeling pretty cheese-proof at this point in time. And I'll also note that generally players who build their gateways up here are going for this goofy double stalker rush that's really annoying, but can end up being quite good. So the big thing that we're looking for are two little bits of information. One is how much chrono boost he has on this nexus. And the second one is whether or not he actually built a second assimilator. This will almost always be a big telltale sign. Oh, and also if this gateway is building a zealot or not. I'm going to say something that too many Protosses don't do. If you see your opponent building no zealot and he has built a gas. Um, actually, it's even more broad than that. If you see your opponent building no zealot and he builds no second gateway, you can actually just attack with one zealot and one stalker and break his ramp. The only way he can defend against this is if he goes straight for a second stalker. In fact, sometimes you can go zealot, stalker, stalker, and immediately attack. And you have a really high break the ramp chance. That's actually a push that not a lot of people consider in PvP that's really, 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 really good when he doesn't make a zealot and he also doesn't make a second gateway. You just can't get quite enough units out of a single gateway to be able to withstand that sort of push. Um, a lot of people will go Stalker, Sentry, Robo. I know White Raw was doing that for a while, but it's just a little bit too vulnerable um, before the warp gate pops out. So right now, Mana is checking in here, and he is going, oh, fantastic. He's not going to be doing any sort of fast second gateway. He can be doing kind of a slower second gateway. But Mana's just going to go ahead and harass around. Four minutes and 15 seconds is about when that Zealot normally pops out. Anytime you see a Chrono Boost, that means that something is popping out 10 seconds earlier. So, ordinarily, this is going to be a Stalker. So you can assume that the Stalker is going to be out at 4.15. Or excuse me, 4.05. Now, one thing you'll note from Mana's point of view is that Mana, at this point in time, has not actually built a Zealot. This is the same thing that can end up being very vulnerable to a player who goes Zealot, Stalker, Stalker with Chrono Boosts. Exactly this. So, Mana needs to be watchful of that. You're noticing that I've been doing the daily for 12 minutes, and we are 4 minutes into the game with one player's point of view. This is kind of important to note in Protoss vs. Protoss. The reason people tend to struggle so much with PvP is there's... Um, I don't want to say a lot of things to consider, but the considerations are big enough that you have to be looking for them every time. In Terran vs. Zerg, for instance, you can build an early bunker and immediately be like, oh yeah, I'm good against Roach Rushes, I'm good against a lot of Zergling attacks, and I'm okay against really small numbers of Banelings. There's not that much to consider once you get that bunker up. Whereas here, there is. You have to do slightly different things. So just to note, I will come back briefly here to before he ends up scouting, a lot of times players will not be willing to build this first assimilator. But when we come in here, 
We see a Zealot and we see, oh yeah, there's the two Assimilators down and he doesn't have a ton of energy stored up. Ma Mana actually really cleverly just Chrono Boost right away. The Chrono Boost timing is actually quite cool in this circumstance. Just being able to identify all this stuff. So I'm actually going to advance forward to around the 7 or 8 minute mark. And we're only thinking about early game considerations. How do we step into the mid and late game comfortably? So right now, he, our, our opponent could could very possibly be going for some kind of foregate. He still could be doing that. So mana, I think, correctly builds this second gateway. I think that's a very, very reasonable decision at this point. Because you just can't possibly know. This stalker is going to have to be really careful. It's going to check here, and this, even this, is real dangerous. This is a very, very dangerous maneuver. If a probe wanders up here and tries to kill us off, that's going to be a that's going to just end the entire game. Mana right here is literally saying, I saw not that much energy on your nexus. I'm going to assume that there is no foregate coming. And the reason I emphasize that oh ever so much is it's easy to i don't know say watch mana win dream hack and to be like oh i just copy his builds the reason he's getting away with doing all this stuff is because he's basically going i really didn't see that much energy on the nexus there's not going to be a lot of chrono boosts on the warp gate he's probably not going for a warp gate probably probably and just going with that can be quite risky a lot of players will lose a game right here due to a probe sneaking in from this angle. But man, is still going to be poking around all sides. To note, 515, between 5 and 515 is when a 4 gator will be moving aggressively towards you. So in fact, when mana is... I'll actually even rewind it a teensy bit more. This is pretty telling. When mana gets to here, and this is empty. This is actually the most key period in the entire matchup. It's about 4 minutes and 30 seconds to 6 minutes. This is where you're either about to be attacked huge, or he's not going to attack you at all. And you have quite a while uh, of leisure time. So as a matter of fact, even though it's quite risky to have a probe sneak up here... 99 times out of 100, if you're looking here and it's around 5 minutes and you've just seen no Zealot, no Stalker, no Probe, he's just not foregating. And if he is, it's going to be a weak foregate. So mana, appropriately, gets up a sentry. Sometimes you'll see players just sort of panic, chrono boost this out if they do start seeing units, but even generally then it's a little bit of doom time. So mana is going for kind of the most defensive way that you're going to be able to go for uh, Blink Stalkers. He's staying as far back as he can and just favoring getting the Blink up right away. It, it, I think these are important numbers to note. Some players will um, get three Stalkers up, but mana is actually getting away with just one. Sometimes you can even skip this sentry if you have a good enough read as to what's going on in this main base. Uh, for instance, if you ended up seeing that your opponent actually went zealot, sentry, sentry, zealot, then yeah, oh yeah, you're going to be happy to just get blink right away. There's not going to be a problem at all. But, you know, sometimes a player will be a little aggressive. You'll make those extra stalkers. You don't want to make the stalkers in mana's position. You actually really kind of don't. So following this up with the Robo Facility and the Three Gates, totally normal. This is Mana's declaration of, I would love to be aggressive. We have the Stalker positioned to spot. We have another Sentry Stalker positioned to try to do uh, some blocking should things happen. We have one Stalker trying to check these edges. We have one Probe here getting ready to plant down some stuff. And suddenly we see phoenixes. So what I'd normally do in a Protoss versus Protoss is I would spend a while between six and seven minutes talking about how you'd know if he's expanding, going blink, going phoenix. I'm not actually going to worry about that too much um, just because we're almost done with part one and haven't done that much. 
But the important thing now is how the hell do I get up an expansion? Phoenixes are increasingly becoming a popular style um, in the matchup because they allow you to harass, they allow you to scout everything he's doing. They're really fun. <laughs> Um, I honestly love Phoenix openings in this matchup. Uh, Liquid Tyler used to do this all the time in, um, I guess Liquid Noni now. Used to do this all the time in the early beta days, and it's kind of had a big surgence now that people can't win with just four gates. But the important thing is not to overproduce Blink Stalkers. Blink Stalkers are great but you don't need tons of them to deflect the phoenixes. I don't mind going for a four gate almost ever if you go for a blink opening. Going for four gate blink is a pretty reasonable thing to do. Um, or four gate blink observer is just a generally reasonable build, but back home you don't need a ton of stalkers. It's very easy to fall into the trap of just massing and massing and massing and massing and massing stalkers, but Phoenixing players know that you have to do this, so they'll just preemptively build a bunch of immortals. So you don't quite want to walk right into that. Base is under attack. I'm here. Um, leaving the base is okay, but as long as it's to try to kill phoenixes, like this is totally kick-ass. This is a great maneuver by mana. But notice, it's only five stalkers here, and only a couple of stalkers back home in the main base. It's not endless warp in rounds. Very early it's important to get up an expansion. So the, the fact that mana is able to do this much damage without really losing any workers, and if you come to the unit's lost tab, heroes lost a lot. This is just a really good way to deflect the phoenixes, and in general, a phoenixing player will never really build more than three phoenixes if you're going for the blink stalker stuff. I mean, mana has ridiculous, stupidly good map awareness. But I'll still emphasize why this can potentially be problematic. Right now, we're happy that our opponent hasn't taken an expansion. Very frequently he will take an expansion, but, you know, if we're going for four gate and the Phoenixing player will see us, he can actually respond to us perfectly. But the issue with doing these sorts of pushes is that you'll just never quite be able to break up to the top of the ramp if you're against a reasonably good player. You'll just never ever quite be able to do that. And of course mana, after pushing all the way the hell far forward, is now taking a nexus. Before we go on to break, I want to note how tough this can actually be to take against a phoenixing player. If you're against a phoenixing player, I would say that there's three big things you need to worry about. One is if he just goes four gate, right afterwards and go Zealot um, uh, Zealot Sentry. Just Phoenix straight into Zealot Sentry. What does he do? He runs the Phoenixes in, he lifts up all your sentries and kills them, and then he just force field Zealot kills the rest. So that's the first big problem. The second one is when he does that a little delayed. A Robo 3 gate push. Where he'll have Zealot Sentry Immortal! Use the Phoenixes to kill off the sentries and just push in. And the third thing that you have to worry about is... Um, if the uh, phoenixing player is expanding. If you go for four gate, you immediately kill 90% of people who are going for this expand, unless there's some little itty bitty teeny choke. Um, but generally, you'll be able to kill this off or at the very least delay it a lot. And of course, going for the four, um, the four warp gate will also allow you to deal with anyone who tries to go for some excessive Zealot Sentry all-in or some excessive Zealot Sentry Immortal all-in. Um, this is really easy to do in Mana's Shoes. This is one of the easiest ways to respond to a Phoenixing player. You just go balls to the wall, Stalker, but make sure that you try to jump onto the aggressive and deny the expand is the big one. It's really easy to just only build stalkers and expand yourself. Just keep only building stalkers and expand pretty early. And then you've wasted too much money building stalkers. You don't quite have enough units and then he'll just kill you early on. I will note that there's another reasonable time to expand, which ends up being quite early. Like, if, especially if you can get some sort of scout in here. It's literally right about like, you can actually beat the Zealot, um, or excuse me, the Phoenixing player to the expansion 
right around seven minutes actually, you can just get out a small number of stalkers. You can get out your five stalkers or so. And then around now, gear up and take an expand. This also ends up being quite reasonable against a lot of Phoenixing players. You don't need a, a terribly huge amount of stalkers to deflect a lot of Phoenixes. And of course, the follow-up question is, how do I deal with someone who's going for a Zealot Stalker all-in if I do expand right now? Or, uh, excuse me, a Zealot Sentry all-in? When you expand, you build a pylon here and you wall off with buildings. Building wall-offs are your friend against Phoenix openings, if you want to do an early expand then. So I'm just going to recap briefly so we can actually finish the rest of this game. What we've discussed is how Mana's opening allows us to deal with some proxying, allows us to um, deal with a foregate, and we saw that there was a little bit of fragile times there around the foregating. But Mana literally just went, I don't see anything coming, I'm at five minutes already, I'm going straight for blank. And it's important that you are able to make that decision between 4.45 and 5.15. That's your 30 second window where you really want to be identifying what's up with the foregate. And then we got the chance to see why Mana's opening uh, response is working, this foregate blink stalker. And we also got the chance to talk a little bit about when our other opportunities to expand. It's quite difficult to get an expansion if your opponent is uh, doing any sort of reasonable aggressive opening. So it's important that we see that Mana was able to take it only when he was really bringing the noise back onto his Protoss friend. When we step into part number two, we're going to do the same thing from Liquid Hero's point of view. Talk about what the hell this Phoenix opening was, why it's so good, and how he's going to be able to exploit it. And then we'll just do the rest of the game and the rest of the daily. Be back in like two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah.